Hello and welcome to Gauder Acoustic. My name is Roland Gauder and today we talk about something absolutely fundamental in hi-fi. Uh, you know, there are many opinions and meanings spinning around the world about uh, what a room should look like and where you should place the speakers. And so I thought it would be a good idea to talk about this from a scientific point of view and not from an advertising point of view. And uh, it's really surprising uh, what there is and um, I really recommend you to watch this video till the end because you will learn something very fundamental for your HIFA system. Yes, there are two big questions in HIFA. Okay, there are many more big questions, but the two big questions about uh, fundamental basis of HIFA is uh, where shall I place the speaker and what should the room look like? And uh, in the 50s and 60s of the last century, some researchers in different universities were on the road to find out how our hearing works. And so in the end of the 50s, uh, German uh, physicists found the following, what we now call the law of the first wave front. So to understand this, I just have my whiteboard with me and uh, I will show you what happens if there is a sonic event. So, like usually, um, I plot the amplitude here, but this time not the frequency. This time we plot the time. And so we stand in a room or outside and then a sonic event happens. Something like this. And our ear detects this pulse. But how does the ear work? How does our hearing work? The hearing is uh, the combination of the sensor, the ear, and the computer, our brain. And then we have an impression of a sonic event. And what Mr. Haas found out was very, very uh, interesting. He said there is a starting point here. The event starts. There is a pulse and some ringing. And then the ear opens up for three milliseconds. And detects what's coming in. And you see, uh, we need this because if we make it one millisecond, then the energy below the curve is too low. So our ear opens up for three milliseconds and all uh, the information getting in is integrated. So we have a very good signal to the noise ratio. And if you see three milliseconds, so we can say the hearing uh, just opens up for 333 times per second. And uh, combined to the, to the eye, the eye just makes 19 pictures per second, so the, the ear is much, much quicker than the eye with that. And in a normal room, we have such an impulse ring, and then the sonic event is deceased. But in a normal room, we have reflections coming. They are just a little bit damped in amplitude, but they have the same shape as the original impulse. When we're outside, then normally we don't have these reflections. And uh, now the big question is, how does the ear work when such a sonic event comes up? Yeah, uh, what's the ear doing now with this information? No, okay, we just have to go back in time to our predecessors living in caves and uh, fighting with mammoths and tigers. And so uh, we can easily think about this and say, okay, I have some information, but uh, I really need to know the place where the origin of this sonic event is. I want to know the source. I want to localize the source because there can be danger. And so the human hearing evolved all over the years uh, to this that the first wavefront is used 
for localization. We make a little frequency analysis with this, but not so much because it's not so important the, how the frequencies are of this event, but the most important thing is where is the origin, the source of this event. And so the year evolved and we are still doing the same thing as our predecessors in the caves. We analyze the first wavefront for localization. We want to know where the sound, the sound is coming from. And if you're outside and you have no second wavefront, then okay, what happens? You make a poor frequency analysis only. And so an open air concert is really not very perfect in sound because uh, you try to localize the speakers, but you don't do a big frequency analysis. In a room, in contradiction, we have reflections. The second wave front, the third, the fourth, the fifth wave front. And now the ear says, okay, I have done the localization. That's important. But I get the same information reflected. And now the ear says, okay, I take this energy and information. And now I do a really good frequency analysis with the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth wave front. And so you can see a room helps us to improve the sound. Some people always think, uh, if I make a hi-fi demo in a room, that's terrible because uh, there are many reflections. No, actually, you see, we get much more information in a room and the room helps us to get uh, more information about the frequency, the transparency, and of course also of the face and imaging of the signal. So a good concert hall really helps to improve the sound of an orchestra, of a band, and that's why uh, normally all the orchestras try to play inside. Okay, uh, that's a good starting point. The law of the first wavefront says uh, we use the first wavefront for localization and the next reflections of this event for frequency analysis. Uh, but what if the second wavefront comes too early? Imagine the second wavefront is just not like here, six milliseconds away or something like this. It, it's just very, very close and happens here. Still, the ear is opening up the gate for integrating all the information coming here from. And so the red and the blue curves are summed up and they give a something like this here. And so you see the original pulse, the original transit is totally distorted by the reflection because the reflection comes too early. Now, what is too early? Of course, we can say uh, three milliseconds. That's about one meter in length for the sound to propagate. And uh, then uh, we can think about our position of the loudspeaker in our room. Okay, if we have a, a wall here and place the loudspeaker flush to the wall, so we fix it on the wall. And the loudspeaker is, for example, only 30 centimeters deep. Then the, the <coughs> lower frequencies are bent around and uh, refracted and are reflected from the rear wall. And if you have a uh, 30 centimeters, fourth and back, then it's 60 centimeters. So this is just like the blue curve coming into the same uh, impulse as the original impulses. So they are added to up to the green curve. And that's very interesting because uh, now because of the reflection of the room, we distort our original music signal. 
Yeah, and this distortion is really a time distortion because of the adding up of two impulses. And uh, the question now is, what is the hearing, our system of ear and computer in the, the brain, making of this event? And uh, of course, we can make a drawing and try to understand what happens. So I have here a room here in height, in width, in depth. And I have a loudspeaker placed here directly in the corner. Then you see all the reflections from the walls and from the floor come too early. They are not three milliseconds away, but they are inside. And so the ear cannot distinguish between original and reflection. And the distortion happens. Distortion means that the shape of the pulse is just changed and altered. And so it's not a good idea to place a speaker here directly in the corner uh, because then you hear events coming from the side wall, from the back wall and from the floor within the first three milliseconds and it seems like the impulse is smeared. It's not a hard attack, it's a soft attack. And of course the localization is difficult. I hear voices coming from here, from here, from the sidewall, from the floor, and all this leads to the fact that the hearing thinks, oh, there is a big, big source of sound coming here from. That's a problem, because uh, we just want to have a point source, real good localization, and not an alteration of the localization due to the floor and the walls. Uh, what can we do now? Okay, well, it's easy. Just take off the speaker away from the floor, lift it up to a stand, and take it away from the walls. How far should it be? Okay, we can say three milliseconds is just about one meter. Okay, give four milliseconds, then we are sure. So it's one meter and 20, one meter and 30. We need uh, the stretch difference between the original signal and the reflection. And so you have a original coming from here, from the speaker, and then the reflection from the rear wall and side wall and floor and coming up to the listener. And this deviation should be one meter and 20 at least. And of course, yes, we can calculate, okay, the baffle of the speaker must be 60 centimeters away from the rear wall, from the side wall a bit more, and that's easy to do. 60 centimeters is not that big, so everybody should be able to try and put the speakers 60 centimeters away from the rear wall and some 80 centimeters away from the side wall. And then you can separate the original wavefront from the reflection. And then you have a good localization and then you get the full transient information of the music. Yeah, now you may say, okay, Mr. Gauder, uh, maybe you're right, but there are some other people who have different opinions uh, because they say I must place my speaker flush to the wall. Uh, but if you think about this, what I told you here, and this is just a scientific fact, then you can say oh, maybe they don't know this or they're just doing this recommendation to put the speaker flush to the wall because of another reason. No, of course there are reasons to put the speakers close to the wall. Just like in this case here, you get an amplification of the bass from this wall, from this wall and from this uh, floor and it's about 9 dBs. 9 dBs is a lot. That's the double volume in bass. And so people are always thinking it's a good idea to put the speaker here in the corner. But as I told you, from this point of view, it's a mess. Also, if you put a speaker high and then put it against the rear wall, that's not a good idea. You get 3 dB more bass. Okay, so you have a small speaker, but it sounds like a bigger one. But 
you lose the transient information, the information of the impulse, and you lose face information, so there is no good imaging anymore. And you have two speakers coming here from here, and then there are reflections here, so your hearing thinks, ah, oh, the singer is not here in the middle, but it's here, smeared or over the rear wall. You lose your localization. And then the illusion is absolutely not perfect. And in Hi-Fi, what we are trying to do is to create the perfect illusion. If you close your eyes and you cannot distinguish between original and the music reproduction, then that's what we try to do in Hi-Fi. But if you put a speaker close to the wall, you will lose your localization and face information. You have no imaging in depth anymore. And then the illusion gets poor. And you can say, oh, this is Hi-Fi, this is not real. So it's not a good idea to put a speaker close to the wall. It's much better to have a speaker at least 70, 60 or 70 centimeters away from the rear wall and from the side walls. And from the floor, of course. And uh, I think this is much more important than having more bass. Because the illusion is what we are looking for. But uh, we can even learn much more from the law of the first wave front. Imagine now we placed our speaker in a good way, far away from the wall, away from, uh, from the floor and away from the walls. And we have a very, very good stereo imaging. But uh, what can we say about the reflections now that are, that are coming? Yeah, and then uh, we think about, okay, first reflection from the side wall. Second reflection, so from the, from the floor. You see, we need them, but uh, what's the difference between side reflections and floor reflections? Uh, you can think about this. Um, maybe you're sitting in, f uh, in your room and then you have speakers in front, and then <coughs> this, the floor reflections, they come over the floor to your ear, and they are equal to left and right. So they carry no stereo information. But the side reflections, they carry stereo information because from the left, your ear is much closer to the wall than the right ear. And uh, this difference in uh, time and also in frequency shape because of the uh, frequency shaping of the nose and the face is just very well known to your hearing. The, the computer inside knows how you look like and knows what to do with this information. So, side wall reflections are very good. They carry a lot of information and they carry a lot of energy and so this, the hearing can make a very, very good frequency analysis with side wall reflections. With floor reflections, they're not so good, they're uh, just uh, rather negative because uh, they carry no information about uh, left and right and about depth. So, the first lesson we learn, we should have side wall reflections. We need them. We need energy for frequency analysis. But we should avoid floor or ceiling reflections. And uh, of course, we can think about uh, the, the reflection from the back wall of the speaker and the rear wall in our room. But the first thing is, we just have to say, uh, let's take care of the side walls of floor and ceiling. So you see, reflections are necessary. Reflections help our hearing to improve the music quality and get a perfect illusion. If we have too many reflections coming from the back, from the side, from ceiling, in two times, three times, four times, like an echo, then our hearing gets puzzled. Of course, that's why we tell people, please start to damp your room. Have a good reverberation time. The reverberation time is the time which is uh, running when you have an impulse, like a shot, and then till it shuts down and you hear it no more. It's about 60 dBs down. 
and uh, this time should not be too high because then we have a lot of echoes and reflections and our hearing gets puzzled. So we have to damp our room. And as I told you, just the floor and ceiling are very, very important. The rear wall is very important. And uh, we should damp the room evenly. But we must not damp the side walls too much. Because we need the side wall reflections. Okay, I always tell people, uh, you can, of course, damp the side walls up to 60 centimeters and start from 100, 1 meter and 30 upwards. But the listening zone, due to our ear, is between 60 and 1 meter and 30. And in this area, you should not place any damping materials. You should only take diffusers in this area. Diffusers are always good. You can place diffusers anywhere in a room. They always help. But you need absorption, in, but in the right place and not on the side walls. Many videos tell you, oh, you must place the absorber on the side wall where the first reflection comes from. If you listen to this and think about this, you see this is nonsense, really nonsense. You <coughs> decrease the energy of your first reflection from the side wall. And if you have low energy, how can you make a frequency analysis? Then the room will sound dull and everything will sound small and pale, flat. Not what we call a perfect illusion. So forget about this. Many people still tell it to absorb the first reflection on the wall, on the side wall, but that's nonsense. Please do not do it. Yeah, and the next thing we learn from the law of the first wavefront is uh, how should we design speakers? In the beginning, uh, we had only small amplifiers in hi-fi in the 30s, 40s, 50s. We had tube amps with four, five, six watts. And so we had to concentrate the sonic energy of a loudspeaker into the direction of the listener. And so we used <coughs> horn speakers like this. And you see, when I do this, uh, my voice is totally distorted by the reflections of uh, the hands and that's the but the energy is directed into your direction and I don't need to speak uh, loud that's the big advantage but the voice and all the instruments coming out from the speaker with horns are distorted and so uh, in the 60s when the bigger transistor amps came up uh, the designers of the speakers uh, went away from horns to exponential horns which just have a big opening angle and so energy to the sidewalls is transmitted. Nowadays, I think we don't need horns anymore because we have so many very, very good and strong amplifiers and we can deliver the energy from the speaker to the sidewalls because you learned that we need energy from the sidewalls to have a very, very good frequency analysis, transparency and uh, imaging. And there is actually no sense anymore to build uh, horn speakers. It's just a special effect, but from a, uh, from a natural point of view, it should not uh, be done. And uh, because I want to create a perfect illusion and I need the energy coming from the sidewalls. So, Maybe this all sounds a little bit confusing to you, surprising, or just totally different from many other people told you before. But actually, that's what scientists found out over the last 50 years. And uh, the law of the first wavefront is just really the absolute basics of hi-fi reproduction. So I want to summarize a little bit just to give you all the big facts. Uh, you learned that we have a big improvement of the sound reproduction if we go into a concert hall or in our living room. But these rooms must have a good damping and a good diffusity. We need reflections from the sidewalls. 
we don't want re reflections from the floor or from the ceiling. And um, the reverberation time of the room should be in a reasonable uh, way. It's about 0 0.3.5 or 3, 0.45 seconds. That's perfect. In normal living rooms, we have much more. But if you just think about what I told you about the sidewall reflections, then you can say, okay, I, need to, I take the energy from the sides, from uh, the, the windows or walls, and that's okay. That still is very, very good hi-fi. We learned that diffusers just make a good job because they distribute the sound all over the place. And we also learned that a good dispersion of a speaker is just very helpful for a good and high transparency and sound imaging. But the most important thing is, do not place your loudspeaker close to the rear wall, side wall, or floor. A loudspeaker must have some distance from any walls so that the ear can distinguish and separate the first wavefront from the second, third and fourth wavefront. So a loudspeaker placing in a shelf or close to the wall is not such a good idea. Of course, there are constructions which need the support of a wall because of the low, of the poor bass response, but then you should think it over and try something different. And uh, still, I must say, Hi-Fi can be a wonderful tool for creating a perfect illusion. And you don't need the biggest speakers or the biggest amplifiers. You just need a good room and the perfect positioning of the speaker in this room according to what we learned. And then you can have a fantastic music event in your living room. And that's what is Hi-Fi is all about. Thank you.